Greetings and salutations. This is Spectre and welcome to the Sociopaths Manifesto. Now initially I didn't think there would ever be a series on this channel devoted to this topic. Personally I thought the Facebook page would be sufficient but it turns out it's not. There are certain subjects that I have to discuss through a microphone. Certain subjects that I feel just wouldn't hit home if I were to write them down and express them through a long drawn out Facebook post because let's face it people's attention spans nowadays are like five seconds and this video is gonna be like 15 minutes I have faith in my ability to draw people in with my charisma alone so I feel that it's time I did it and I'm going to start the manifesto on a subject that I am pretty passionate about. Now, I say passion and I mean it. Uh, there's this misconception going around that sociopaths feel nothing. And that's only partly true. The truth is that we have very shallow emotions that like depth. But, that being said, there are emotions that I feel at such an intoxicating level that they're pretty much an addiction in and of themselves. That being rage, primarily, uh, and euphoria. And this topic pretty much touches on both of those things. I'm not going to lie, and thinking back causes an extreme adrenaline boost that gives me that high and shaky fingers, you know, stuff like that. And I'm going to start particularly by talking about an individual that I will refer to as the Sage. And I won't be using their real names. For one reason or another, I feel that doing so will just cause more issues. Mostly because I feel eventually they'll see this. I'm not going to hide it from them. This is not the point of this video point in this video is to explain my perspective on a situation that normally would really look like bullying objectively in, in one of these scenarios with, with the sage. The second scenario I'm talking about is more of a situation where I probably more so appear like the, the hero in a way. And I'm not going to validate either of those arguments. I, I'm pretty much a neutral party here, so I'm going to I'm going to express the highs and the lows of both situations from a sheerly objective standpoint here. I'm not going to justify anything I did. I'm not going to try and say that I was just a perfect person and that these individuals were they deserved it. There's an argument that can be made that they did. Um, but, again, like I said, I'm going to remain pretty objective with this. Now, the first individual, the Sage, um, these names have meaning to them. Sage used to refer to himself as this. He used to feel that he was wise or that he was talented when naturally he lacked both of those things. He wasn't very he wasn't very smart, he wasn't very bright, he was unwise and he was very unintelligent. And this individual for all intents and purposes was probably um mentally challenged. I recall in the past he said that he used to ride the short bus to school. And there's a joke in there somewhere I'm not gonna make, but My issues with him began on the very first day. You see, upon our meeting, he had already decided that I was um, that I was a monster, that I was a bad person. He would eventually go in and explain himself by saying that I reminded him 
uh, me of himself at a younger age and that's why he wanted to get away from me and nonsense like that. Personally, we shared nothing in common. In fact, I feel the reason why he made that suggestion was because deep down he wanted to be like me. And even at one point he intended to um, let's emulate my personality. I mean, in a way that it seemed like he was replicating a, uh, he was replicating a comic book villain, so to speak, when he tried to copy me. He was really hamming it up there. Um, so it really just became obvious how he saw me and what he thought of me. Um, you know, the person really didn't bother me, but at the same time, he was also being very pompous. His issues with me were that, you know, for one reason or another, he wanted to one-up everything that I did. He wanted to appear important, so he constantly um, flaunted his art that wasn't any good or tried to shove his religion down my throat. He's a very religious person. He uh, professes to be a Christian on and off again. Sometimes he's very devout, very, you know, you'll all burn in hell. The next minute he's just sort of picking and choosing what he believes in. And this individual for the longest period of time, I put up with his nonsense. I, I really was trying to be a good person in this situation. I was kind to him. I, I tried to be very generous about things. Heck, I didn't even tell him how I felt about his art for the longest time until eventually all the constant um, bailed put downs and nonsense of that nature started to get to me and I started to show him how it felt back and for the longest time he never even acknowledged any wrongdoing in his mind he was a victim I perpetuated the cycle I, I admit um, even at one point uploaded a picture of his arm riddled with scratches uh, and I say scratches because they weren't very deep you know he cut himself short ways not long ways and he posted the picture online so it was clearly for attention but what he wasn't taking taking into account was the fact that I would take that picture I still have it to this day and I saved it and I used it as leverage against him for the longest period of time. I threatened that I would show his family the picture. I threatened that I would show everyone it. Um, there was even a period of time where I was briefly posting it everywhere I could um, just so that I could drive a point home. Uh, eventually went no contact with me, cut me off entirely, um, which more or less just irritated me because personally I felt like he was the individual that didn't really deserve to play the victim card, the way he treated others, the way he just dismissed other people's point of view. And uh, naturally, I just toyed with him for a while, a very long time, I just played with his thoughts and emotions and I sort of made sure to make it a point to squash his dreams. I was so upset with him, I was, I was definitely angry. The way that he had sort of promoted himself as being uh, better 
than everyone else, while at the same time having none of the skill, none of the ability to even prove it. Um, the last I saw of him was his YouTube channel, which he put together a bunch of very bad parodies. And I commented. I, I let him know, this is just terrible, you should stop. And of course he deleted all the videos soon thereafter. There's nothing on that page anymore. Save for a video on his favorites that has a veiled kind of connection to me. I feel it's more like an antagonistic marker, something he left there on purpose. But anyway, it doesn't bother me anymore. Now the other individual, I'm going to refer to him as Dagon, and I have a very short period of time to talk about him, about four minutes, so I'll make this quick. You see, in Christianity, there was a period where they talked about a false god called Dagon, who was thought to uh, command water and promote the harvest of grain. Now, there's a parallel there, and like I said, it's very poetic the way I'm doing things here. Um, you see, he is what I believe to be a narcissist. And there are various indications toward it. The fact that he couldn't stay away long enough to, uh, to let his bad habits die off and stuff like that, the promiscuity, the fact that he cheated on his girlfriend and then blamed her for it, stuff of that matter, but he wasn't quite a sociopath, you see, he, more than anything, wanted the adoration of everyone around him, he wanted to be important, and to do that, he would interject into relationships and friendships and he would tear them apart just so he could play doctor with them. Naturally, on an opposite side of the spectrum, I didn't agree with his actions. Um, and you might think that that's crazy, but I think there are some selfish reasonings behind it. Like a sort of, there can only be one of us here in this situation at this time and there can only be one tyrant. Uh, of course, I spent a very large amount of time finding the individuals which she inflicted wounds upon. And I went to them offering salvation, offering revenge. And over time, I amassed a group of people and with enough scorn and hatred towards him that it was so easy to motivate them to get rid of him for good. Well, my thing about him was that he was a coward. He couldn't take criticism. And criticism basically burned a hole in him. And for that reason alone, I was able to beat him. Because his ego was more important to him than the obvious problem at hand. And it was easy to turn these people against him because he gave me that ammunition. He <laughs> wasn't very careful about who he hurt and how. Naturally, taking him down was pretty easy. In closing, I haven't had any contact with these individuals for at least the past several months, and it's probably for the best. You see, if they had stuck around, if they hadn't wiped themselves completely off of social media, I would have continued to pursue them. A feeling of euphoria and the adrenaline rush that comes with it. It's so addictive, so controlling, that I have no doubt I would have continued to kick them while they're down, and I never intended to be a bully. Now that being said, this is all I really have time for today. Remember, I'll be continuously posting more videos on the subject of Sociopaths Manifesto. Um, if you like this video, like and comment. 
I'll be happy to respond. 